celebrate Christmas looking a bit more plumper than we did a couple of weeks ago. Isn't it great to be with families and friends and we've been blessed to have Carmen with us and people just popping in and visiting with us. It's a great time of the year, isn't it? And of course, we're right on the verge of a new year. And I always love to, uh, before I start a sermon, I always love to glorify God um, with the things that he's done. And even if this year, 2013, existed just for this one man, I give God praise. You know that Mary and I are pastoring in Kaikoui, and uh, I think it was about the second time we were there. <coughs> one uh, one Māori chap with real European features came to me after the service, introduced himself, and he said, this week... I recommitted my life to Christ. Amen. And I thought, that's great to hear. We're removed. That's really great. And he said, as I got up this morning, my friend uh, who I flat with said, I'm, I'm going to go for a walk. And uh, Wurumu says, no, no, I'm going to church. And his friend said, I'm coming with you then. And uh, he turned up and, uh, and came to church with his friend. The next day, they had a working bee. Those two men were also there. And it was only about two weeks ago, after a prayer meeting one evening, uh, one of the ladies in the church asked me if I could take a Sabbath school uh, to, to Wurrumbu, which I did. And as I got to his little flat, he's uh, standing outside, excited and, uh, and just blessed. And the change in this man is absolutely amazing. You know, God does wonderful things, amen. He says, come in, come in. Have you got time? I said, yeah, I've got time. He said, come in and have a, have a listen to what Selwyn and his friends got to say. And when I walked in... Um, it was an amazing, also the transformation, because uh, Selwyn is the type of young married chap, quite tall, a bit round-shouldered, wears his little woolly hat, and, uh, and he's just beaming from ear to ear. And I said, what's happened? And he says, I just cannot get enough of the word of God, because I've given my life to Christ. I mean, amen. Isn't that good news? That one soul... Uh, just because one guy said, I'm going to church, he went with him, and now he's recommitted his life to Christ. He said, can I get 3ABN on my little box? I said, no. Nah. I said, but I'll make sure that you can, and we've installed uh, 3ABN for them there. So isn't God good? Of course he's good, otherwise you wouldn't be here this morning, amen? And when we reflect back on the year 2000. And 13, great things have happened, and there's been changes that have taken place, amen? And of course, it's all been what we've experienced. It's all been to the glory of God. Everything we do, everything we receive, everything we say is all to the glory of God. You know, we've had highlights uh, this year too in our own church here with baby dedications. We've had a baptism. New people have, have publicly committed themselves to Jesus Christ. And that's, that's a real highlight, amen? So God, God is good. Baptisms are always great. And it's great to have new people, new people coming and fellowshipping with us as they have viewed the truths of the gospel either on 3ABN, First Light, or the Hope Channel. And it's great to see them accepting the Sabbath truths and just coming into our doors. And of course, that also puts a big responsibility not only on us as leaders, but on yourselves to welcome, to love, and encourage those people into the church. Amen. And it's great to see you stepping out and doing that. And of course, there's new Bible studies. Um, you know, Adrian, myself, uh, picked up new studies. And, uh, and uh, it was just great to hear where Sue mentioned the other day, she came in contact with one. And again, he with smiles on his face says, praise the Lord, I've found the truth uh, during my study. So God is doing a wonderful thing. And of course, uh, the Holy Spirit also. And of course, as you notice, physically, our church is looking a lot younger from the outside. It's been refreshed, it's been repainted, and, uh, and so it should be because it's the house of God. It's the house of God we worship, and it is also not only are we the witnesses, but the church itself. If it's well presented, then uh, it shines also that, uh, that we believe in a soon coming Christ. But... Between January the 1st, 2013 to December the 31st, 2013, not only have we all aged 12 months <clears throat> or even had a change in our physical appearance, and I'm, I'm talking positively because we've, most of us have done the CHIP program, amen, but alone spiritually, alone spiritually, we should not be the same anymore and cannot be the same if we take our belief and the soon coming of Jesus, seriously. 
we should not be the same people as we were on the 1st of January 2013. Why? Because we've had wonderful studies, wonderful topics presented to us in our Sabbath school classes. And when we reflect back on the year, at those topics that we've had, we started off with origins, you know, the topic of origin, and it's great to know where we came from. Great to know where we came from because there's a big dispute going out on the world there about evolution, right? But we have a wonderful foundation that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and that's our foundation, and we stand uh, firmly upon that through the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. He told us, and we believe that. We then went on uh, into our next topic, which was um, revival and reformation. Revival and reformation. And that's what I'm talking about. After doing those topics, we should not be the same people. We are revived. We've got a new flame within us that should be burning brighter than it did on the 1st of January 2013. It should be brighter so that it has inflamed our lives to create a change. Not a change that's negative, but a positive change. And of course, um, uh, by deepening our relationship with Jesus Christ this year, we embrace each day with even more fervor and happiness as we want to see what he has in store for each of us in the new days upon this earth and how we can have more contact with our church family and simply calling, praying and studying together. Sabbath school defined is really our religious education, our own personal religious education in discipleship. Each day and on Sabbath, we are doing exactly what the scripture says in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every great work. Isn't that great? That's part of our Christian education, our education in discipleship, and what a great place to, to form it is in the study of our Sabbath school during the week and of course to, to finish it on Sabbath to then go into a new topic for the following week and of course as we all know we've just finished with that wonderful topic on the sanctuary you know and we've had had a great study on the sanctuary we've been saturated with it today and also I'm, I'll be speaking on that uh, in, a, in a few moments but the sanctuary um, as we read it is the hope of Jesus promise in the culmination of that great plan of salvation. From the beginning until the very end, the sanctuary is all about Jesus. And isn't it amazing that the Seventh-day Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church as a movement have been raised up to prevent that everlasting God, to present, sorry, that everlasting gospel to the world in every aspect of it, and the sanctuary stands there as one of our solid 28 fundamentals. You know, that's, that's powerful. Just coming back a bit, I'll just back up in regards to revive. It says my, in um, Psalm 119, verse 25, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your word. And of course, we can only be revived if we're spending time in the word of God. You know, and that's been my prayer this year too, and I hope it is your prayer for 2014 that God will give me more time to spend in the study of his word. And I'm thankful as I study not only the Sabbath school, but to prepare for these sermons that I'm, I'm um, becoming deeper and deeper uh, into the study of the word of God. And it's just beautiful. No matter what you, you do, what you study, it's all about Jesus. And the world needs Jesus now even more so than he did at the beginning of 2013. The sanctuary, the hope of Jesus promise, and the culmination of the plan of salvation from the beginning until the very end, the sanctuary is all about Jesus. And of course, prayer. Prayer has been a major thrust for our church this year. Prayer is the oxygen of church life. Without it, the church dies. And at the beginning of uh, January, 
we only had one prayer group here in the Wangarei Church. Now we have four, praise the Lord, four. People are earnestly supporting these prayer groups, are coming along at uh, 11 in the morning on a Wednesday, at 7 in the evening on a Wednesday, at five, quarter past 5 on a Wednesday morning, people are visiting these prayer groups. And of course we have a cell prayer group out at um, uh, Mangataperi also, which has also been well visited. We need prayer to help us to grow. This morning, Kevin mentioned a, a popular Psalm 2 in uh, Psalm 77, verse 13. The way, O God, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Our God is absolutely amazing. He's absolutely awesome, and he's huge. And today we're going to pray our way through the sanctuary. We're going to pray our, our way through the sanctuary. We're going to take a look at the seven steps of sanctuary prayer. Seven steps of sanctuary prayer. Perfect in the number seven of sanctuary prayer. And of course, the first one, as we think about the sanctuary, the first one is the prayer of thanksgiving. The prayer of thanksgiving as we enter the gates, the door of the sanctuary. Psalm 100, verse 4, it simply says, Enter into his gates, with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Every day as we recommit our lives to Christ, we enter the day through the door, through the gates of thanksgiving as we think of the sanctuary. Each day anew. And of course in Revelation 3.20 we have that fantastic verse where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and will sup with him and he with me. Every day as we get up in the morning, we pray that we can hear that knocking of Jesus on the heart door so that we can open it so that he will come in. And during the day, we can sup with Jesus Christ. Not only the door of opening for thanksgiving, that the, but to welcome uh, our Lord in. And this also should be our prayer as we think of that. Oh yes, Lord, I pray that you will come through the door of my heart today. Oh yes, Lord, I hear your knock again today. Lord, I want to sup with you again as I did yesterday and again and again, Lord, knock even harder so that the noise of the world does not deafen me to your knocking should be our prayer. The world is throwing so much at us. And I just, you know, pray again for our young people for what the world is throwing at them. But of course, there's no excuses. It also throws rubbish and stuff at us that takes us away from our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the most saddest thing that could ever happen, ever happen. The time is short and uh, we need to be building our relationships. Just this morning in the Sabbath school, it is nice to hear from our brothers and sisters the comment about relationship building, about relationship building with our Saviour Jesus Christ. Because without that relationship, he doesn't know us and we don't know him. And we need to defend him in our witnessing to the world. Second, the second step is the prayer of confession. As we look at the sanctuary, we think of the prayer of confession because before us is the altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice here is the place where that lamb was killed and offered, that lamb representing our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Altar of sacrifice, here we again confess our sins. Since our baptism, since we've come to the Lord, we've stumbled and fallen again daily we confess our sins to the Lord. Our belief in Christ claiming his sacrifice at made at the cross. That huge sacrifice. That huge sacrifice. Jesus, we celebrated only, only this week the fact that he came into the world. But if he didn't go to the cross, what would have been the purpose of him being born in Bethlehem? He went all the way. Confession is also a prerequisite in emptying ourselves, uh, oneself for the receiving of that latter rain 
the, that Holy Spirit. Lord, yes, I am sorry. Yes, I did do this. And yes, Lord, I did do that. And yes, Lord, I am sorry. Confession is what we need on a daily basis as we think of the, sac the sanctuary. And of course, the third step. The third step as we visually walk into the sanctuary is the prayer of cleansing. We've had the confession, we've had the thanksgiving, and now we're standing before the laver. And we think of the laver whereby it talks about washing and cleansing, representing also our baptism. But since again our baptism, we have fallen and we still need that daily cleansing. So as we look upon the laver, our prayer should be, Lord, wash me clean today. Purify my mind, purify my mind, cleanse my thoughts and prepare my speech for those I am to come in contact with today. Study of his word is so important so that as we meet people, we can again present his word in the, in the purest form that, uh, that we can. Cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind. It should be our prayer as we stand visually uh, or symbolically before the laver. Step four. Step four, the prayer of supplication. Praying, asking for a, a, a special supply of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As we come into the, into the, into the sanctuary and we have the seven candle lampstand upon on our left side there, seven again representing that perfect number, that perfect uh, symbolism that uh, God has for his Sabbath and uh, for completion. As that seven branch candlestick burns, symbolizing the light of the world, we think of Jesus Christ again. Jesus being the light of the world. John 8 verse 12, Then spoke Jesus again, saying unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When Jesus is the light of our world, there is no darkness. No darkness in where we are to walk through the day. No darkness in understanding of his word. He illuminates our minds with understanding, with direction and purpose of life. Today, Lord, I do not want to walk in darkness, but help me today to reflect your light to those who are in darkness, your perfect light that shines from your glory and your glory alone. You know, no matter where, where the light, that, gloriful, that glorified light of Christ shines, darkness cannot exist. That's why we follow Jesus, so we know the way. The fifth step, as we... Look across from the seven branch candlestick. We notice that on the right hand side we have a little table of showbread. What are we praying for at this stage or at this step in the sanctuary? Our prayer should be is for physical and spiritual food. Our needs for the day. We're starting a new day, our, 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 our reserves are, are low, our fuel tank is empty, we need to, to uh, fill it up again with the word of God. So our prayer is for physical and for spiritual strength. Our needs for the day, as we, as we pray in the illustrative prayer of Jesus, our Father, give us this day our daily bread. John chapter 6 verse 35 also qualifies it. And Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. What a wonderful promise Jesus has given us. Never hunger, never thirst. But we've got to be connected to Jesus. So as we're going visually again through the sanctuary, we see the bread. We know that Jesus is there to sustain us spiritually and physically for, for that day and for every day onwards. As we go through the day, we are to break that bread symbolically with those we came in contact with, breaking it so that people will have understanding of what his bread represents, the word represents, 
and what he means for us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? How many needs? All our needs. But my God, my God and your God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. And you know, uh, when you think of that, his riches is not an empty basket. It contains, it fills the heavens, doesn't it? And that's what he wants again to bless us with. As we turn away from the table of showbread, we have before us the, inter, the, the altar of incense. The incense rising from the altar with a sweet perfume to the Lord God Almighty. The prayers of the saints of God. The prayers of Jesus daily to his fathers when he walked the earth and also in the garden of Gethsemane. And of course his prayers today as he ministers for us in the sanctuary above. Prayers for all those who have gone before us and those in the here and now and those to come. Our daily intercessory prayer for each other. Christ's intercessory prayers in the heavenly sanctuary are continuous for all of us. Pray without ceasing our prayers. Pray without ceasing. That is my most favorite verse, I think, in the Bible, or one of the many anyway. Pray without ceasing. We've seen wonderful things happening this year through intercessory prayer. We've seen members healed. We've seen members uh, encouraged. We've seen members strengthened. And we've seen new people enter the doors of our church through intercessory prayer. And when we connect here on a local basis with intercessory prayer, it just spreads around the world because the connections we have either through 3ABN and those other channels of, uh, of, of putting our prayer petitions before, before God. Romans 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all these things work together for, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Again, a wonderful promise, a wonderful promise that everything... All things work together for good to them that love God. What should we fear? We should fear nothing because we love God and he's promised that everything works together. Let us pray with people every day. That is the sweet smell of prayer. If we can just have a prayer in the street, in the home, or wherever we are with someone who needs healing, who needs strengthening and encouraging. There's just a joy that... that that comes with that, that we, we can't experience any other way. In the book of the, uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it simply says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for the, this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. Again, prayer is the oxygen for our lives. Prayer is the oxygen for our church. Seven, step seven, as we stand before that, where that curtain once stood, uh, as we look at the sanctuary, it's no longer there. It's been torn apart, and we have access to the most holy uh, place where our, our Lord is ministering. And of course, as we stand there, and our thoughts and the step that step seven of prayer is one of worship and praise, one of worship and praise as we come before that place. In the presence of our Lord God Almighty, we pray prayers of worship and praise there's only one who deserves our worship and our praise and when we think of what's happened in 2013 he answered our prayer in a magnificent way you know when you think of the way he's healed Kyle he deserves our praise and our and our worship Hebrews 10:19 having therefore brethren boldness to enter boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus, we have access to God the Father. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. 
That is to say, his flesh. His flesh has taken the place of the veil. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. We don't need anything else. We have Jesus. That's why we can boldly draw near to the throne of grace. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Our bodies are washed by pure water. Not only is the laver symbolism of that washing, but Jesus is that water of life. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard as we go through life. Our faith can maybe uh, uh, waver. You know, we get tempted. But if we take our, take our eyes off Jesus, we will fall away. But when we've got our eyes upon him, he strengthens us so that our, we can hold fast to that profession of our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have. What a wonderful church. What a wonderful message we have. And let us consider one another to, to, to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We cannot let that one go. We cannot stop assembling ourselves together especially as we see the day of the lord approaching that is so important we're out there with jesus being tossed and buffeted about and we need to have each other as we come together on the sabbath to to encourage and to strengthen but don't leave it till sabbath pick up the phone and give some a ring uh, somebody a call and ask them how they're doing come together um, and, and with all the wonderful communication that we have not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. In the Old Testament, God dwelt in the physical sanctuary or temple. Now we are God's temple. When we confess our sins and turn to him in true praise, his spirit will fill our lives. There will be no room for self or self-righteousness to stand any longer. His glory will fill his place, our temple, our body. This temple of the Holy Spirit that we are, that you are, may our eyes be the windows allowing the daily word of God to come through and fill our souls, our temple. May our eyes be the windows allowing that daily word of God to come through and fill our souls, our temple. May the door of our heart always be open to love those around us. May that love be uh, escape through that door of our heart to those around us so that the love of Christ can come in. May the utterance of our mouths be one of prayer and praise and not one of putting people down, but of one of encouragement to uplift and to praise God. May our ears be in tune to that quiet, small voice of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of... Uh, um, communication going on that just dims that voice of God. So may our ears be in tune to that quiet, small voice of the Spirit. May our noses also smell the beauty of the presence of God in his Holy Spirit to, to know that Jesus is there with us, to be able to smell his beauty. May our touch be the compassion for those whom we share life with in all aspects of family, friends, and neighbors. Compassion. We have to show those in the world who Jesus is. Let the language of the soul be, Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. It is thy property. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it for thee. Save me in spite of myself, my weak, unchristlike self. Mold me, fashion me, raise me into a pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through my soul. May that be our prayer for 2014. And again, as we look forward to going into a new year, 
and um, it's amazing just how fast this one's gone. And I, again, I was hoping it was only a fable, but as you get older, they do go faster. The time's still the same, but I don't know why. But as we look at 2014, may we go into 2014 being a different person to, that, that, to what we are, were this year. It's only a couple of days left before we celebrate that. So let's spend our time, we're, most of us are on holiday, to spend that time in the study of God's word, to pre prepare ourselves what he's got ahead of us uh, for next year. And for those of you that are going to camp, praise the Lord, may you also be spiritually enriched so that you can help minister to serve the church. And also those that aren't at camp, may you have the time to study to also be encouraged and strengthened. And we thank you for everything that everyone's done uh, for God's church in 2014. So God bless you all. Amen.